All right, video is live. Stand by for audio. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So this evening, as I'm recording this, I am welcoming back a powerful, newer co-host to this show, a gentleman with years of medical experience, years of natural experience we're going to talk more about. But most importantly, I'm bringing this gentleman back on because he has broken the programming of the medical world. And thanks to his lovely wife, he has uh, taken a more natural approach. But the reason why I've welcomed him back on the show is because he has been on Live the Fuel prior. And we talked a lot about this gentleman because he is the author of The Paleo Cardiologist. And the reason why I've welcomed him back on that we started this uh, recording today is because recently, literally in the past week and a half, there's been some powerful content out online from the American Heart Association. And since they're such a well-known organization, many news platforms have, I'll just go ahead and say this, bastardized the content and spread a lot of inappropriate or I should say incorrect educational content. So I reached out to him to come back on as soon as possible. So without further ado, welcome back to the show, Dr. Jack Wilson. Thank you so much, Scott. It's a pleasure to be on. And uh, yeah, I love talking, love getting the truth out there. That's what it's all about because we're not hearing the truth from the mainstream media. That's, that's one thing that's guaranteed in life. You will never hear the <laughs> truth from them. And let, let's be real. Am I coming out too strong? Am I overly passionate about that intro? Did I, did I come out a little too one-sided? What do you, I mean, what's your opinion on that? Uh, well, I I'm mean, a little um, frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. First of all, you know, when you said I'm, you know, somewhat, ho you know, natural or whatever, I'm pretty hardcore on the other direction as far as natural and holistic is concerned. Uh, I was trying to me, softly bring you in. <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. There's no sugar coat in my message. Uh, we're pretty extreme. My wife and I, the doctors, Wolfson, we're very extreme. We piss off a lot of people. We're judgmental. Yes, we are judgmental. And I didn't even know what judgmental was. I'm a total left brain, you know, guy. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden people on Facebook all accusing me of being like judgmental. Like, well, yeah, but that's kind of what we do. At least you do. stand for something. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I can get on a Facebook as we all could and just talk about how gorgeous the weather is in the summertime, wherever we're at. I don't know. But hey, listen, <laughs> I'm on Facebook to get my message out there. I'm not, you know. I'm not there to socialize. I'm not there to hook up with a high school girlfriend. Um, I'm there to get the truth out there. And that's where, the, um, that's where the truth really sits right now. It's on shows like this. It's on social media. And, uh, you know, I mean, really, it's like a lot of this stuff, I'm sure you are in the same boat. It wouldn't even come to your attention unless someone like told you about it. Like, oh, did you hear what was on NBC? You're like, no, what channel is NBC? Uh, so anyways... Well, admittedly, um, so on fr Friday's episode, so that we, uh, just for our listeners, guys, this is so real time because I'm going to air him this coming week because I need to get this content out there as soon as possible. I'm bumping out other pre-recorded shows because I want to hit this current and fresh and now because I'm the host and I can do whatever the hell I want. Yeah, so, sorry, everybody. Sorry if we're, <laughs> sorry if we're bumping you, but it's, yeah. uh, I, we'll, we'll all wait. We need to get the accurate content out there. So Friday's episode, I brought on uh, a local sports nutritionist. She's a regular co-host on my show. And I love the fact that, and a shout out to Erin Sparrowhold. She's a CN, she's an MET, and she works with the, uh, the Mind of the Athlete team here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And uh, she works for all the surrounding universities, including you brought up Muhlenberg before we started our recording today. And we brought, and I titled that episode, it was at those 86 on Friday, you know, the AHA, Coconut Oil, and Fat with Aaron Sparold. So to our listeners, guys, there's some of kind of like your hint where we're going to go with this show. If you guys have not seen some of the viral content around this coconut oil debacle, we're going to get into that today. And that's why I reached out to Jack because number one, the, the gentleman is a freaking cardiologist. So you can't beat that level of experience. And the <laughs> fact that when he was on this show, not, not, too long ago, literally a few weeks back, you know, we aired him and you guys got to learn about him on episode 70. And, you know, we talked about wheat, leaky gut, vaccines, his, 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 his creation of the paleo cardiologist. And it just fast forwards me to today. And I'm like, I got to bring this guy back on because people don't understand what the hell saturated fats are or healthy fats are. And we talk about you know, avocado and why coconut oil and olive oil and grass-fed butter. So let's get into it, Jack, man. I mean, 
<laughs> the AHA, you know, I, when I aired Aaron's episode, we talked about how I hold them socially accountable. You know, they don't, they, they have, they have millions of dollars backing their, and we'll use the word lobbyist type of, you know, agenda. And I'm like, guys, like, I don't care who's paying you, like take a social responsibility and how you publish your blog articles. Yep. No, and I mean, they, they, they didn't take that. It was so, it was so miseducated. Like people see a title, people are lazy. They don't yeah. read the blog article anymore. They read the title. Well, you know, what's you know, crazy is that people talk about this like there was some new study that just came out. So even the media is running with this and they're saying, you know, new information or a new study. And it wasn't any new study or any new data whatsoever. It was whatever this um, uh, presidential, you know, presidential, you know, advisory thing, uh, you know, that happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, from from the head of the American Heart Association. But all these things are, you know, they're just like you said, they are just, uh, you know, fronts for, uh, you know, for corporate interests is, is what it is. The American Heart Association, they, they, their income is close to a billion dollars per year. And if you look who the donors are, it's the pharmaceutical industry, it's the cheap food industry. It goes, uh, you know, it just goes so deep. And, you know, Scott, we'd love to live in a perfect world. We know it's far from that. But the reality is, is that the American Cancer Society, Susan Komen, American Diabetes, I mean, the American Diabetes Association supports a, a diet for diabetics of, you know, pancakes with sugar-free syrup. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it just goes to show you, obviously, you cannot trust any of these people and always consider the source uh, when you're when you're talking about any of this stuff or whatever well, you see and what you're hinting at right now so for our our listeners you know we we do youtube feeds now so i decided to share my screen because i can thank aaron sparrow for bringing this up when i recorded her session earlier this past week she's like you know what do you want to talk about and because we were talking about you know a lot of my listeners have been asking about doing a label reading episode which kind of relates to this. And she, she, I love her terminology. You'd probably relate. You'd love her because she talks about this false healthy halo, she calls it. You know, when people are like, oh, well, because the stamp on the label says heart healthy that you should trust it, you know. It totally relates to what we're going to talk about here today. Yeah, it's kind of but, like the Flintstones vitamins. The yeah, Flintstones it's like, oh, vitamins yay. are number one recommended by pediatricians. I yeah. it. But, if, but, but people, people don't know. And Erin brought this up. She's like, um, all I got to do is pay for that stamp to go on my label. So uh, right here on USA Day Today's website, you got – and here's what pisses me off. Because when AHA publishes something, they automatically relate it as experts. So right here, you got one article saying coconut oil is out. These are the oils you should be using, experts say. So they want you to click on that. Then the next article, coconut oil isn't healthy. It's never been healthy. Next article, experts, coconut oil has never been healthy. <laughs> so before I've even clicked on the article, all I got to do is see that. And if I'm a misinformed or a minimalist type of uh, information consumer, I could stop right there and say, okay, well, I'm definitely not going to buy coconut oil ever again. Now yeah, Jack, it's all about headlines, but I guess you got uh, plenty of shopping opportunities to the right. You got uh, Dave Asprey, the bulletproof coffee guy, and you got <laughs> the other people that are marketing to you. So I know what you're looking at. <laughs> you're like, uh, you see those, you see the negativity about coconut oil and you're like, wow, that reminds me. I've got to buy some more coconut oil. I'm almost out. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's a right way and a wrong way to take this information. And, and I, I'm going to go ahead and actually I will reshare because and I, you know, actually you guys released a very powerful episode or blog article on your site, which I referenced in Aaron's episode. And I actually have that linked in her show notes and I'll bring it up again here today, but like, I'll go back to, I'm sharing screen again, our American Heart Association. I went back on their site a couple days ago and I Googled, well not Googled, but search engine in their site, in their search window, just the words coconut oil. And this was the most current article. Admittedly, I don't think this was the same article that was published almost two weeks ago now. Um, I think they actually changed some of the content. I don't know if you can agree or disagree with me on that because I know that when, you, when this article came out, that helped you justify why you guys published your most recent article in the past week as well to help try and give proper education on this. But anyway, long story short, they published an article called Saturated Fats, Why All the Hubbub Over Coconuts. 
This is not no, the article I read. We no, can no. Have well, I mean, the thing that I read was the um, was the presidential advisory from the president of the American Heart Association, and in there it just really uh, indemnified. It just uh, went after uh, saturated fats. Um, not even I didn't even mention coconut oil, and then I think. Yeah, they Somehow, went more blanketed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the news just started. You know, then they're like, ah, well, you know, what's catchy? I mean, let's let's bash uh, coconut oil. And wow, if there couldn't be more more popularity, um, uh, you know, I mean, for the past 40, 50 years about bashing coconut oil for all the reasons that you and I know, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's all it's all about money. Soybean oil costs a penny, and coconut oil is a dollar. I mean, so. And uh, our our local agricultural companies aren't making the money on the coconut oil. So it's like, well, uh, we're making corn and soybeans. So here's a million dollars. You know, let's, let's justify this. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Yep. To save, to save literally billions. Yeah. So, yeah. And and it's frustrating, but but, you know, so our listeners guys, like we're kind of venting right now. And I know I am, Uh, I'll be the, I'll be the crazy guy. I don't normally get this amped up, but I was so frustrated when Aaron brought this up and I'm like, come on guys, like you have a social responsibility to create some balanced education. And unfortunately when that stuff came out, it was so one-sided. I'm like, guys, yeah. you are impl- you are impacting millions of people. See the AHA along with the ADA and everybody else. And again, guys referring to the American Heart Association and the American Diabetes Association. These organizations I think sometimes underestimate their level of impact to society and they don't understand what the hell they're doing sometimes. No, I think they me. get it, man. I think they get it. You know, I think the powers that, that really run the place get it. I think the underlings, they run with the headlines and they, uh, and they think they're doing a good job. Um, you know, but once again, if you look at the top of the American Diabetes Association, American Cancer, these people have no interest whatsoever. They are just fronts uh, and lobbyists. For, for the pharmaceutical and, you know, big, uh, big ag companies. Well, and there I loved your, so again, the, the article I was referencing to our, our listeners, guys, and again, if you're hearing this, pause this show when you listen to it, or go, if you're watching it on YouTube, pause it, go to the doctorswolfson.com. And I shared it all over Facebook. I even got some weird commentary back from some of my followers <laughs> that I've been dealing with. But uh, their article from Jack was called, Is Coconut Oil Deadly? So this was the article that was released back on the 18th. Today is the 25th as we are talking right now. That's why I was telling your listeners, like, this is very current. We're, we're taking this seriously. And his next headline is, The Conspiracy Against Saturated Fat and Coconut Oil. So that's where I really want to kind of dive in with you, Jack. I don't do pre-programmed episodes, but your headlines are beautiful because it really targets where we need to target. Why should our listeners understand why saturated fats do belong in our body? Well, I, you know, listen, our, our, to me, Scott, my default is always mother nature. What, what does mother nature do? How does mother nature behave? And it is very clear for millions of years, our, our ancestors have been eating saturated fats. Sure. Um, you know, they've been eating saturated fats in animals. They've been eating saturated fats in fish and in eggs. And they've been eating saturated fat as their mother's breast milk. All mammary, you know, <laughs> that's the white reason wait a why minute, dairy. My, wait, when I was a baby and I was nursing from my mother's, you know, bosom that... She, she was that, trying to kill you. She was trying to kill you. Yes. What she the was hell? Trying to kill you <laughs> with saturated fat. Don't you get it? Like, <laughs> mo- no, no mothers like their young. I mean, it's just uh, you know, mothers are trying to off us. And so she should have been giving job. me formula, right? <laughs> yes, she should have been giving you soybean formula. So yeah. uh, instead of you know, uh, Scott, you'd be Sheila. But uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. I want to be politically correct here. Sure. Um, but, uh, I mean, listen, that's what they would have you believe. And that's what they told all of our mothers. I mean, my, I wasn't breastfed. Uh, the story goes on and on. It just wasn't popular in those days, but not because of the saturated fat issue. But that is one of the ramifications of not being breastfed is not getting all of that juicy, delicious, saturated fat to make our brains. That's why eggs have it, because that's how a chicken comes to life by consuming the yolk, which is loaded with saturated fat. You cannot form a chicken any other way. Yes, it's funny because if you study, and I I geek out on this crap, so 
I always thought like the, obviously if you think about it, I tell people like guys like, okay, when you, when you have your egg white omelet, you're stripping the core of the egg out, right? Well, why do you think the yellow thingy is in the middle of the white thingy? Because the white thingy is protecting the yellow thingy. And if life comes from the center of the, I mean, the white thing, the yellow thing, like guys, like where's the life coming from? All the nutrient density is in there. So can you imagine how many egg yolks, <laughs> egg yolks have been lost over time? All of that amazing. And let food. me be honest. I was that guy. I yeah. didn't. I mean, a I few, a few years I, back. I never, I never was that guy. Well, and never. thank you. But yeah. I mean, I was a dumbass. Let's be yeah. real. I was I, a dumbass. Yeah. I just wasn't that guy. <laughs> I just wasn't that guy. I, 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 people think like people, I, I get a little high on my horse and I, I need to be honest. Like a couple a year and a half ago, I started getting really aggressive with my own father. And my dad's like, wait a minute. Weren't you Mr. Egg White Omelet guy that one time you decided to stay over here that weekend? And I'm like, yeah. you know what, Dad? Thank you. You're right. You know what? Right. I did for a very brief period listen to the magazine articles, and then I thought about it. And then I was like, I noticed just from – because I'm a huge athlete. I noticed from an athletic performance I didn't feel right, and mm -hmm. I switched back within a couple of months. But I was still the dumbass who trusted these half-assed articles and thought that I was doing something smart. Yeah. And then I thought about it. Like just, I just took a little bit. I was like, wait a minute. It's the egg is like one of the most perfect freaking foods on the planet. Like, it's like a multivitamin. It contains everything <laughs> for a chicken to come to life. I know, you know, if we give my, our dog, uh, hard boiled eggs, uh, he only eats the yolk. <laughs> he, <laughs> really? he only eats the yolk. He doesn't touch the whites. So it's like, what does the dog know? Yeah. Uh, more so than the cardiologist does. See, our coon hound, I, and I was telling you earlier, I was gone this yesterday and the day before all day in chainsaw training for our, our trail systems here. So I feel bad. Our coon hound and my, my, my fiance was out of town. So our coon hound was alone all day. He's, he still has a lot of energy tonight. And I think he was howling earlier, but he hates eggs. I, yeah. I try and give him eggs and he huh. won't touch them. He'll eat the bacon. Yeah. <laughs> he won't touch the eggs though. So Yeah. Interesting. Now, yeah. I mean, and you know, in the past, you know, we've done recipes that call for uh, egg yolks. Uh, you know, we've done some, uh, you know, raw ice cream uh, recipes, you know, where we get the raw cream and the raw dairy, you know, mm -hmm. from your neck of the woods um, and uh, mix that in with the raw egg yolks. And then we try and give the egg whites to the dog. We've done that before. And he's like, I've got no interest in that. You put a yolk in the bowl, and he just dives right in. Well, I'll go ahead and say it. When I was eating those egg, egg white omelets, number one, they're impossible to cook. They, they just turned out like yeah. crap. I was always like burning them to the pan. They and taste the like crap. The flavor was just like <laughs> yeah. ass. I was oh, like, terrible. what is, oh, uh, I was terrible. like, it's terrible. And I, I kept trying to add more because like, oh, maybe I just need more. And yep. like, it, it didn't help it at all. I mean, this, these are just examples of the American Heart Association and just, uh, you know, their policy over the years of just slowly vilifying, you know, these foods and, you know, the coconut oil industry, they've got no sponsorship with the, aid, uh, with the American Heart Association, uh, the, uh, you know, grass-fed farmers association, you know, the grass-fed cattle farmers, on and on and on, you know, I mean. Well, yeah, uh, they're, they're up against a well-established, right? Let's be real. Like, I mean, the, gra the new grass-fed thing, which is funny because when I was a kid, I don't know if you remember from our last show, like I grew up on a farm mm -hmm. and we weren't like a hardcore farming family, but my dad had, when I was born, we, he had like a 50 head of cattle dairy farm in New Jersey when there was more farms in New Jersey. <laughs> and, uh, and then we moved later into Pennsylvania and he still wanted us to grow up around animals. So we at least raised animals. So I always, mm -hmm. I, I had my own chicken coop. I sold chicken, uh, eggs on the side of the road. You know, we raised beef, we raised pigs. We, it was a thing. And wow. It was awesome to grow up that way. And, but that was back, that was, that was in the 80s and the 90s. And then we didn't have all natural or, or organic labels and any of that stuff. So now I, I watch this now and I'm only 39. And I'm like, dude, that's just like, that's just the way we grew up. We didn't spray anything on the fields. And we just, when the cattle crapped, I took that stuff, I put it in the, in the manure in, in the, in the spreader. And I hitched up the tractor and we drove it out in the field and we spread it on the fields. Like, yeah, yep. that was all we no, did. But Monsanto <laughs> says we need to GMO everything in order to feed the world. We got to make yeah. it all genetically modified. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's how we did things. People are like, Oh, how'd you fertilize your field? I'm like the manure that came from the chickens, the pigs, the cows, the goats, like we had Nubian goats too. Like I drank goat's milk. Like yeah. I went and milked the goat 
took it in the house, took out a coffee filter. I ran it through a coffee filter. That's all I did. I ran it through a coffee filter and I drank the goat's milk. That was my childhood. Yep. And now, now goat's milk is trendy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you can buy it by the car and at the Whole Foods. <laughs> well, you know, if you read some of the early stuff by uh, Michael uh, uh, Poland. Um, great, and, great source. Yeah. yeah interesting. And, and when he, you know, talks about the time he spent at that Polyface Farms and Joel Salatin, uh, and just kind of understanding about that rotation of what you just said, you know, how, you know, the cows, uh, you know, eat the grass and then they poop all over the grass and then you move the cows and in come, you know, the chickens and the chickens dig up everything there and all they the poop and stuff that. like that. And they scratch yeah. and everything and they eat all the bugs and then you move the chickens out and then you refertilize everything. It's just, it's so perfect. It's, it's so a natural perfect. cycle of life. Like, yeah. I remember what, I mean, thankfully, I guess, and I'm in Eastern Pennsylvania, but I'm only 20 minutes from the border of New Jersey. We're only an hour ish from New York city. And we grew up and like, we knew what crop rotation was. Like we, they taught that when I was a kid in school nowadays, yeah. I don't know if they teach that at all, but like, we actually didn't, we never grew soybean in our fields. We did grow corn, mm -hmm. but we rotated alfalfa in after every corn cycle because i knew as a kid that corn raped the soil of nutrient density mm -hmm. and we needed crops like alfalfa to apply nutrient density back in we would cycle yeah. that and we grass fed or alfalfa fed or clover we, we planted clover in the fields too like natural clover ground. Mm -hmm. like it's like that's what we fed our cattle like we didn't yeah. feed a lot of grain back then Right. We just rotated our cop crops. It was awesome. So, but then nowadays that's a thing. Like apparently it's a, it's a very advanced. <laughs> right. Right. Well, you know, once again, they're vilifying the saturated fat and then that's, you know, but uh, I, you know, it, and there are so many hundreds of studies that are out there. There are so many studies that are in favor of saturated fat or at least at least neutral about saturated fat these meta-analysis you know the american journal of clinical nutrition from 2010 2014 they're looking at hundreds of thousands of people and they're not finding any difference in uh you know in in saturated fat intake and uh, uh cardiovascular disease cardiovascular mortality overall mortality uh, if the American Heart Association wants to attack something, go attack artificials, go attack yeah. GMOs, go attack sugar, go attack all the alcoholics, you know, that are out there, uh, go attack, you know, uh, pharmaceutical industry or those that are polluting the environment. But for some reason to go after saturated fat, like the grass fed farmer, how about all the saturated fat that's inside fish, uh, you know, uh, fish is loaded with saturated fat. But of course, apparently the literature on that's okay. The literature on uh, fat, saturated fat from dairy appears to be okay. But uh, why, why overall, does it they, seem they like, why? so again, for our general listeners, because it's not always people that, I, I, I'm not saying I'm an advanced listener of podcasts, but I've spent the past four years building my educational experience, again, to our listeners, guys, I'm giving you a hint. The power of podcasts and audiobooks. And like, for example, The Paleo Cardiologist is in my library, physically and digitally. I've listened to it three times each. <laughs> it's, 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 about, you, it's, about, it. it's about recirculating the content because every time I listen to it, I get a different angle. For example, I'll be listening to it again this week on my road trips for business because I have a whole different level to tap into now because of the AHA. Thank you, AHA, because now I want to go back and listen to that and just see if I hear something different from your content. My point is, there's a lot of free content out there to our listeners. And if you're not becoming a self-educated listener and a becoming your own inner physician and starting your own self-study, you're being blindly guided, unfortunately. And that's really one of the most frustrating pieces to me. This is, I'll warn you to our listeners, guys, like, Jack and I are geeking out right now and we're very fired up because of the AHA. Because we're frustrated, because we're self-educated to the point where now we take offense to it. A am I wrong at that? I mean, no, I don't I mean, know, Jack, and, I don't want to speak in your words, but. No, I mean, listen, organizations like that are just going to run themselves right out of business because the average person, uh, people like us, I mean, we, we get it. We, you know, you can become a doctor of the internet and people make fun of those people. Where'd you get your medical degree? Google. Yeah. I mean, and it's more valid. At least I than, tried. 
yeah, I mean, than, than what the medical doctors are doing and the people, uh, you know, but I, you know, that have said this, you know, for years, uh, you know, off and on about saturated fat. And I've heard doctors who have no training in nutrition whatsoever, they just spout off the mantra from the American Heart Association um, when, you know, when there's so many other culprits out there then, you know, then societies in the South Pacific, 50 to 60% of their diet is coconut based and they have and no seafood. heart disease, despite the fact that they all smoke. I mean, all these people in the South Pacific, the American military, yeah, what's left up all the that? cigarettes. They, they left all the cigarettes down there. They didn't leave the McDonald's. They eat the coconuts. They eat their native diets, uh, and they're all and they're all fine. So you know, and then you can get into well, it's not coconut. It's coconut oil. So it's refined. I don't know. I mean, listen. You look at the data on olive oil and the people that are sucking down olive oil. There's tons of great data on that. So should we condemn yeah, the, the all book oils? Extra Virginity? I promote reading the book Extra Virginity on a regular basis because it helps really shed the light on what's happening. And you and I, and and I'm so by the way, real quick side note, so happy that uh, actually you and Vinny got connected. I'm, oh yes. Uh, I'm a huge networker, so I, I, I'm going to take a little bit of credit on that. I'm, I'm, I was so fired up to hear you guys chat on his show because I'm like, yes, because you guys are going to fuel off each other. So congrats on getting on his show because he's got a lot of exposure. Yeah, and- no, no, he, he's got a lot of exposure. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, real quick, this is a total side note, side it note. It is. It happens. The first, <laughs> the first, yeah, right, the stream of consciousness. The first <laughs> thing, um, you know, we, we shot an episode an hour long, and the whole thing got zapped. It uh, it got. I lost. thought I heard that. I was yeah, so, uh, and that happened was, to me with him too. And I'm like, dude, who's your digital guy? That's frustrating. Yeah, you would think for as big as his show is, and Vinny's yeah. a nice guy. Let me listen, man. He's you know, he, and we're, we're we're all on the same team here, no doubt. Exactly. But what I learned from you, what he quickly delved into was kind of this anti chiropractic thing. And, I, I did uh, warn you about that. But but I had to I straightened him out on the first episode, but we never hit on it really on the second episode because oh, he kind of right. segued into, well, you know, well, yeah, well hold on, Jack. Let me tell you. Uh, you know, I don't think that uh, the the chiropractor should stand up on an airplane if they're looking for a doctor. That's that's his thing. That I told you about that. That's his thing. Yeah. That's his thing. Well and yeah. I said and I said, listen, it's if you are on an airplane, the medical doctor can do nothing. His cell phone doesn't even work. A doctor of chiropractic at least can give you a chance with an adjustment yeah. uh, to, to balance the autonomic nervous system. And I feel so strongly about that. Uh, you brought that up on our episode 70. I brought it up on, on our episode and, and he got it. I mean, he, listen, he's a smart guy. He understood where we were going. It just, it didn't make the recording. I- which I will say, like, v- Vinny's old school. World. Vinny's yeah. old school. But if you're an intelligent man like yourself, you can get through to him. Yeah. And it's going to take individuals and professionals like yourself because here's the thing. You're a cardiologist. So the fact that you are on the other, in his world, the other side of the spectrum, yeah. and you're telling him this, he's actually, that's why I wanted to get you guys connected. Because well, if, any, if anybody's going to be able to break too, yeah. him, it's going to yeah. be somebody like yourself. Yeah, well, I, I didn't want that message, you know, to certainly, you know, to get lost because I do know he has a lot of followers, but whatever, yeah. whatever, uh, go see your chiropractor. But we're moving it in the right direction, right? Yep. And that's yep. all we can do. We're trying yep. to share valuable information and like we're doing here today on saturated fats. Like there's going to be people who listen to this episode and have no clue what the hell we're talking about. Yeah. Let's be yep. real. But I mean, at least listen, we're putting I'd rather this out have there. you, you know, I'd rather have you on the airplane as, you know, EMT trained and medic trained, uh, and at least you'd have the ability to call out for you know someone. Hey, does anyone have any cayenne pepper? And does anyone have any beetroot juice on the plane? <laughs> we need some stat beetroot juice. I to do the love back. some good beetroot. Beet. That's, that's that's some good stuff, man. But yeah, can we, are we gonna are we get a fine on a plane? No, because yeah. <laughs> they don't allow fluids through security. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, I bring my powder through. So if anyone's having a heart attack while they're on the plane with me, we'll just reconstitute some beetroot powder. We'll crank up the nitric oxide. Oh, we'll there's a life hack, the listeners. There you go. Listen to that. Yes, yes, that's a that is a gem from Doctor Jack. I'm loving that. That's that's very creative. Yeah. See, we learn something new every time we get on here. That's the power of podcasting. You know, I mean, I mean, listen, you know, what I can tell you, Scott, is that in my experience in my office, you know, we, we can talk about studies all day long, but I've got the experience of thousands of people in my office. And I'm telling you, um, when it comes to if they follow the plan and the plan is about 
eating paleo, eating organic, responsible paleo, stuffing yourself full of organic vegetables and spices and herbs, and then having free range grass fed meat, having wild seafood, having nuts and seeds and eggs and avocados, and yes, coconuts. Uh, when you follow that plan, my patients do extraordinary. I don't know what else to say, except for it's mother nature designed it. I've got the lab test to prove it. My patients are testimonials to it. Um, you know, and when you look at big dietary studies, as you can imagine, they're so fraught with so many errors. You know, they look at people, they ask them, you know, about, uh, you know, 24 hour dietary recall. Uh, you're looking at a bunch of people that are eating garbage food. You're just not talking about people like you and I that are eating organic, responsible paleo grub. I mean, it's just, it's just not. And let me ask, let me ask you, I, I didn't get a chance to ask you this in your last episode. Before you made the big flip, you were in the big medical cardiovascular world. Like you were in a big heart doctor type of yeah. institution. Yep. Now, while you were there, did you, were you at the same level of health nuttiness that we are at, for example, today? Not even close. Not Let's even be truthful close. about that, yeah, right? Not, you had to not, make a big shift too. Close. Big time. Yeah. hundred percent. And honestly, I read a lot of the same resources you read, but frankly, you get onto pubmed.gov and that's the government's database of all studies, right? I mean, that's like our secret area. Our, our sad like diet. You, yeah. I mean, that's where you and I hang out, you know, uh, you know, on pubmed.gov. Um, when I met my wife, I was eating McDonald's cookies, cupcakes, fast food, Krispy Kreme donuts, drinking, uh, smoking too many cigars, staying up late, you know, living a totally toxic lifestyle. Uh, and I was doing it with all the rest of the cardiologists. So the cardiologists you know. are the absolute worst person to ask for health and nutrition advice. They eat like crap. They live like crap. Um, their only salvation is statin drugs and aspirin, which are miserable, miserable failures. I just did another blog post on the site, uh, breaking down. You'll love this too. You'll totally geek out on that stuff where uh, I'm talking about all the statin drug trials for primary prevention. And I did the recording and I had my staff listen to it. And my staff was just like blown away by, by the snow job that they have been um, you know, uh, you know, trained and brainwashed into, and I'm talking about, you know, 23, 27, 31 year old women, you know, that's, that, uh, they, wait a that, that's, I mean, that may sound young, but they've got a good chunk of experience already at that age. Well, right? they got plenty of experience in the pharmaceutical, you know, right. uh, you know, brainwashing, uh, you know, place because the, the druggy uh, bandaid. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they watch, uh, they watch their TV shows or whatever. And, uh, you know, maybe they're watching an episode of the Kardashians and they're talking about, uh, the latest, uh, you know, psych drug. So which um, article are we talking about here? I'm on your blog right now and I'm sharing the screen to our uh, video well, listeners. Well, for, well, first of all, this is a great one about, about heartburn, but you can keep scrolling down. Uh, keep going there. Uh, ooh, I got to go back and read your energy gel, goo. I can, I can get into a whole different thing about that. <laughs> Where's my post? Coconut oil. Well, that's that goes back to the 18th. Was it before the AHA response? Huh. Or you after? You know what? You, you know what? Maybe I didn't put up a blog post. I'm sorry. Uh, can you go to my? Uh, well, it's on YouTube. I I put the video ooh. on YouTube. Okay. I put the video on YouTube, and it's also on Facebook, so uh, you can see it on there. But it's it's a 15 minute video. I break down. Uh, you know, for the main studies when it comes to heart disease. Um, sorry to make you search this. Oh, no, I'm on, clo on I, show, I, I had to close out the USA Today tab. I just couldn't leave that on. It's, it's insulting in myself because uh, <laughs> I don't read their crap. The only reason why I opened that tab is because they took what we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. We, they took the AHA content and just made it even more negatively viral. And just, it's just, uh, that, that's my point. Like, you guys, you guys have to, you guys have to understand what you're spreading. Like people don't know any better. So is it on your personal page or the Doctors Wolfson? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's on the Doctors Wolfson. Awesome. I'm bringing that um, up here. Somewhere. Yeah, pro I'm sure USA Today is totally excited. Like, wow, we got this new list, or we got this new follower, Scott Mulvaney <laughs> from yeah. Pennsylvania. It, it's called, I'm just going to take your content and rip it to shreds. <laughs> yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's Heather going crazy about vaccines. Oh, uh, uh, we were just talking about my girl, my, well, now my fiance, as of a couple of weeks ago, um, we're talking about going to South Africa and she's like, oh, we got to get all vaccined up. And I'm like, 
I, 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 my natural reaction was like, uh, I don't know. Cause like she, she and I both agree we don't do flu vaccines, Yeah, but she's like, well, this is South Africa. We may need to consider some vaccination. Like what? I mean, I don't, you know, we got to figure out what I, she's worried about first and then we can have a conversation. But yeah, South, it uh, depends uh, where you're going in South Africa. If you're going, to we're going to literally South Africa and she's going down cause she's a, she's a vet doctor, large animal. Yeah. And we're going down for uh, CEU credits for her. Yeah. But it was like super cheap to add me into the trip. And I'm like, yeah, I'm there. Yeah. But you go into the so. jungle or you go into a big city. I mean, I mean, South Africa, the country, but I don't think going we're down, going into down. the jungle. I mean, all right, keep going down. I mean, if you're going to, you know, big city, Johannesburg, I think you're okay. I think we are. Yeah. Well, I think we're doing Johannesburg and then afterwards we're going to go to Cape town. And I'm like, really? Those, are- those, 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 I mean, that's like going to New York and to uh, Chicago. Yeah. Keep going, my man. Keep going. Oh yeah. I, I, st- I, this was on your blog. Though. I want to go back and actually read that one. Though, yeah, too. no, that's a, that's, that's a pretty solid one. Keep rolling there. Oh, this was a good one here. The- Pesticide juice. Oh yeah, yeah. I love that one. That, that Again, guys, picked up- oh, actually real quick while I'm scrolling yeah. here, could you explain to people about the, the positives and negatives of juicing when done the right and wrong way real quick? I mean, I think on your pesticide is, point. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, yeah, it, it just blows my mind how people can go to uh, Whole Foods or Nectar or some of these other places and drink concentrated pesticide juice. They're absolutely killing themselves. So please don't do that. But, um, uh, you know, juicing, I think is, I think is good, but you lose a lot of the fiber. Here we go. Nice. Uh, so if you go to YouTube or click on either one of those and you'll, you'll wind up there. Yeah. So long story short, if you're not sourcing your product properly, is that just the picture? Sorry. You got to hit that YouTube button there. Yeah. You're, you're getting the, the pesticide content and it's like real quick on the other last thing, but it's like, guys, like it, you can juice all you want. If you brought the product from crap and we got the audio coming through now. So let me pause that. So now why did you, why did you produce this video? I mean, we um, talked about statins on the last episode. <laughs> yeah, I, um, why did I, 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 I forgot if there was, um, I love this it, one right here. Hold on, let me yeah. pull this one up. Uh, <laughs> Lipitor, yeah, I don't know if there was, um, was, there, was there another new guideline that was put out or people were talking about, um, uh, oh, uh, that's what it was. There was a, a new study, or basically new information that came out saying that people, uh, 65 years of age and older, uh, you know, for primary prevention, statin drugs don't help. So I just want to show kind of all the data in general for primary prevention. And maybe if you just kind of pick it up, maybe like a third of the way through. Now keep going. Keep so you going. get into the chemical makeup here. Yep, keep going. That's why I love your fee, by the way. I've been geeking out more and more ever since I started. After, ever since I got on the show, I'm like, you, you provide really good, again, guys, listeners, like the doctorswolfson.com. Like seriously, he provides very detailed content. Um, okay. So, yeah, so, so this is the HOPE 3 trial, and this is the most powerful drug, uh, Rosuvastatin versus placebo. They look at them for five and a half years. And if you look at the people that are in here, I, I, you know, I just wanted to highlight oh, the people that- a good baseline screenshot. Yeah, yeah. There, is, there is some pretty sickish uh, people that are in here. You know, uh, half of the people have two uh, risk factors for cardiovascular disease, either being overweight or hypertensive or pre-diabetic, um, uh, quarter were smokers. And then here's more data about their lipids and stuff like that. But the next slide, and all these people, if you look at the HSCRP on the bottom, it's all two. Yep. So they all had um, uh, inflammation. And then, I mean, here's, here's the difference after five and a half years. Wow, look at this. The placebo versus the Rosavasta. Rosa that's cr- yeah, Crestor. So yeah. that's Crestor. It's um, less than 20. I, I mean, it's, it's um, I just want people to understand that their way is a failure and our way does not get you to a uh, death from any cause risk of 5.6 versus 5.3. What we want to do is create a population of people that doesn't die when they're 65. These people live. Well, and we talked briefly about this in in episode 70, but Again, you came from this world before you've matured your knowledge beyond, like thanks I, from what I got, I a large influence of your powerful wife. And yeah. it's like, guys, like pharmaceuticals, like a statin, it's a Band-Aid. It, 
it's not a cure. And, it, they, and but, but here it's like, it just doesn't work. I mean, here's, here's the data. Yeah, we're um, looking right at it right is, now. This is their data. This is from the New England Journal of Medicine. This, this slide is not- Which has a uh, high reputation, by the way. Or doctored. This, this is the information. Um, you know, and, and then I just show study after study. Here's the, here's the data on Pravastatin and over 10,000 people. Wow. It's just, uh, this study showed primary endpoint, all cause mortality. The drug didn't save any lives. And I just want people to know the truth. He, I mean, here it is. I mean, look at that, Scott, on the left. Pravastatin versus graph. usual what? care. What? What? They're overlapping, all cause mortality. So if you tell people, hey, the statin drug is not saving your life, um, They'll Again, to our, to our listeners, guys, you can watch us on the YouTube video, but go to his Facebook feed, go back to this link. I mean, look at the statin link. I'm at, I'm at minute, seven minute and 37 seconds. There's a slide of a, it's a blue color with two bar graphs next to each other. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's, he can't it's, make this up. Like, no, this is, I mean, this is not his, this is not his content. <laughs> it's, I mean, this, this whole video is 15 minutes long. And if you are a statin user or someone you love is on statins, they must see this information. But you know, once again, if you're a cardiologist, this is all, you know, this is all that you got. This is all that's in your toolbox. Well, and, you know? and, that, and actually that's a great point to bring up. Guys, like, uh, I, I, Millie, I wanna beat up the heart doctors, but I almost feel like they don't know any better, right? Until they become educated, they don't. No, any. Well, you know, the drug reps come in, they bring us the free lunches, they wine and dine us. And, and then, um, you know, this slide is, is a good example as well, where you see the, you know, so the drug rep comes in and they show these graphs and they say, look at the difference here. You know, if you look at the one on the top left, Scott, yeah. you know, fatal and non fatal uh, stroke. Listen, the drug group did better when it came to stroke. By how much? A half a percent after, after three Yeah, years. I was going to say, I'm looking at the numbers on the left. It's only one, two, three. This exactly. is not a huge one, percentage two, three. shift. It, to me, I mean, listen, I'm not a big fan of, of the government getting into anything in our lives. But if there is, a, but I mean, you know, there, this is just false advertising. That scale has to be zero to 100. And when you put it on zero to 100, you find that there is essentially no difference yeah. between they these They purposely graphs. modified the data and scaled it back. They kept reducing the number values on the X and Y axis. Again, this is me being a former engineer. Uh, guys, like this isn't rocket science. If you go into Microsoft Excel and you create a bar graph, if you want to create two curves, so you can actually see how they overlay each other in a more significant perspective you just reduce the value the variables until you get like what we're seeing on the screen right now to your point if i would add this to a zero 100 these would have been laying on top of each other practically yeah you know and then and then i'll go conspiracy on you and say all this you know all it's this manipulation data is, of data is, is you know, could easily be i mean it, it could be manip manipulated and to make it false marketing uh, it can be manipulated just with the fundamental raw numbers to tell us lies. So this is the best that they can put forward. Here, this, this study, at least they actually, if you see this, Scott, here, they put the, the, the small graph in there, but mm -hmm. then they did the 0 to 100, and you can look at that bottom uh, Yeah, you know, actually, you can barely there. see there's two lines. Seriously. And, what, and, and let me go to that, you know, that NNT, that number needed to treat, means hundreds of people need to take drug to prevent an event for three years, four years. And for the pharmaceutical com companies, this literally means that hundreds of thousands of pills are being swallowed. To Translated prevent, to hundreds you know, of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I it, mean, just craziness, right? craziness, trillions. So they're, they're able to justify their manufacturing and production levels because yeah. they know like, hey, we need at least three to four years to make an impact. So let's, let's ramp up production. Kudos to this slide that I read. So anyways, at the end of this era, I tell people what, you know, what to actually do about it. You know, uh, here, here's a, a famous study uh, involving simvastatin versus placebo. And, you know, they just put the graphs so a little close. different way. You know, I mean, it's if you want to go run out and say, hey, I may be that one out of 100 people that get benefit, okay, fine. But at least you know the truth. I mean, these people come in, uh, you know, to my office and they're like, well, my cardiologist said I'm going to die if I don't take the drug, you know? And does that look like life or death type But here's stuff? my thing. Before the doctor, before cardiologists in this current year existed, 
what did we do years ago? We did not have this rate of heart death and heart disease. We didn't because we had a different lifestyle yep, yep. than we so have today. You follow, you follow the rules of the uh, – <laughs> it's actually, I threw in a bonus one there, top 11 – um, I like know, but that. this is, this is what we got. You know, this is, uh, you know, you know I'm glad you put a number 11 here again to our listeners, guys. He's referring to, he's got a top 10 list here that I'm showing on the video. Uh, one paleo, uh, obviously he's the paleo cardiologist <laughs> Two, get sunshine, three, get sleep, four, get active, five, get relaxed, six, get grounded. Uh, that's a whole different conversation. Dr. Jack Cruz and I talked about that too. Uh, number seven, get away from toxins. Number eight, get adjusted. Edgar, going back to Cairo, love it. I go at least minimum one to two times a month, minimum. Um, get hydrated. Dude, hydration is so key. Not even if you're not an athlete. Number 10, get tested. But number 11, he points on here, get supplements. I don't care who the hell I talk to nowadays because obviously I support supplements. I'm like, guys, because I grew up as a farm kid, our earlier conversation on this show, I'm like, listen, whether you like it or not, we don't do the farming that we did years ago. And the food at the nutrient density level, the vitamin and mineral nutrient density, I would love to be a whole food diet guy. And this, these whole 30s and paleo, that only takes you so far. You, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, especially here in the US, we have to be doing a certain percentage and level of supplementation. Well, and that takes you back to number 10, Scott, is that get tested, you know, instead right? of Your blood you know, testing you know, relying on it. You know, I mean, let's see where you're at. I mean, so get tested and, you know, maybe you need more magnesium or maybe you are high in, in heavy metals. I mean, listen, uh, you know, for the first 35 years of my life, I ate and lived like crap. Uh, yeah. I got some catching up to do. And even when I'm, you know, perfect organic paleo, there's still deficiencies uh, for genetic reasons, uh, mm -hmm. for environmental reasons, for historical reasons, on and on and on. You know, we brought that up on the last episode. I actually forget what you called it, but I think it was like, you know, it was like three, four hundred bucks or whatever it was. You actually have a package or a, or a testing, recommend, a recommended testing kit bundle. What do you call it? Uh, don't forget, I'm blanking on it. Well, the one thing that's on our website right now is something called, if you go to our shop page, it's called the Wheat Yes. Zoomer Thank and the you. wheat zoomer is all about leaky gut. And you know, for those people that, oh, well, I'm a low fat guy and I avoid coconut oil and I have my oatmeal and I have my wheat bread. And uh, okay, fine. Why don't you get tested for leaky gut and see how things look? Because I've seen those people and a lot of them have leaky gut, a lot of them have inflammation. So, you know, it's funny you bring this up. So, um, I told you earlier before we started the recording, I was in a chainsaw training all weekend to help our mountain biking trails. And even though I've already trained at that level back when I was a wildland firefighter, I was doing it to make the county happy and OSHA regulations and yada, yada, yada. But the one instructor, huge inflamed belly. And he's a logger, hardworking guy. And anyway, we took everybody mountain biking afterwards. And on the, halfway through the ride, this father and son are on the ride. And the kid like steps off his bike and we're, we literally only did four miles and the kids like doubled over, like just not looking good. And I'm like, he's like, Oh, well he just got back from having lunch with his mom. And they're like, Oh yeah, blame it on the mom. And I'm like, actually, I'm going to go ahead and ask like, what the hell did she feed him? Right. And then the guy's like, Oh, well one guy's like, Oh, I got a cliff bar sugar. No mm -hmm. guy's like, Oh, I got gels sugar. No guy's like, Oh, well give him those cherry block things sugar and i was like how about you don't give many of that and like oh what do you do i'm like dude i just got done doing a colon cancer ride last weekend now granted it's taken me a year to year and a half to get more ketogenically trained but i literally did a i did a, a, a vinnie totorich thing i took those old goo vials and i mm -hmm. filled them with villa capelli olive oil mm -hmm. <laughs> i've yeah. never done this and i've this, i've been this has been my goal because i wanted to see if this was legit i took two of those vials and i had them in my in my shirt my jersey and that's what I took. So when I hit those rest areas and they had the cookies and the muffins and all that crap, I didn't eat any of that. I did yeah. my, I did straight fat injections and granted it was different. I'm not perfect at it yet, but I was like, holy crap, I did 60 plus. I did a metric century ride fueled on fat. And when I woke up in the morning before I even did the ride, I had eggs and bacon and a green smoothie. And yeah. that's how I started my day. And I'm like, holy crap, I actually can say that I've done this. Yeah, well, I know that Vinny has his, uh, has his olive oil that he likes, and kudos to that. But uh, back to the original conversation, yeah, yeah. I, I think you can easily suck down coconut oil. Uh, yes. And, the, you know, the MCTs, super easy absorption of that, and then that is just 
pure fuel in the furnace. Love it. Well, Love and it. That, that does go back to the original point. Thank you. Because again, guys, olive oil is an MCT. An MCT is a medium chain triglyceride. And Doc, why the hell do people need to be consuming MCTs? Well, it's, they're very easily absorbed, uh, number one. So you don't need a you know, high function in gallbladder, uh, liver. And it's very, I mean, it, it's very easily absorbed. Uh, so just thinking about an athlete, and we're talking about athletes uh, you know, right now, and something that's kind of easy to digest on the go, I'm thinking coconut oil has got to be perfect. And it's so packed you know, with uh, nutrition, or even if you're eating coconut on the ride, as opposed to something that's simple sugar, I think that would be perfect. Uh, all of those MCTs, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, 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 caprylic acids and the lauric acids, uh, tens and twelves, those are lauric acids. I mean, those are, those are pure antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial, those are just so, so healthy uh, and easily broken down once inside the body and just turned right into fuel in your mitochondria and just make everything spin. I tried explaining that to a friend of mine, and she's a fellow CrossFitter, a friend of mine, but she's actually recently become more, she's a triathlete, and she's become more Ironman focused. Like she did her, her first full Ironman last year. She's already done a couple of half Ironmans this year. My, my fiance is becoming more of a triathlete too. And I told her about fat adaptation and about trying to get her body to that point. And she's like, you can't drink olive oil or coconut oil in the middle of an event. Mm -hmm. She's like, that's, you're just going to throw up or it's you're going right. to, or, or, or she's like, you're going to crap yourself. And I uh -huh. said, well, have you done it? Can yeah. you say that's happened? <laughs> yeah. 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 But it goes back to your point, doc, do the testing see where your gut flora is at, right? Maybe your gut biome is a little jacked up and maybe you may react that way. I don't know because you haven't gotten the testing done. Yeah. And are we talk about a large dollar investment here? No. I mean, yeah. think about it. People are going, walking into a vitamin shop, a GNC. Uh, what's the shop that I used to, when I was stationed in Arizona, what's the, around the Phoenix, Arizona area, it's like a local chain of, of vitamin stores, I'm blanking. Yeah, I mean, on is, it. is it like one stop nutrition or whatever? But the uh, point is, like, yeah, we don't, yeah. a lot of, people just blindly go in there you and drop hundreds tested. of dollars every month. Yeah, seriously. And if you get tested, you can see exactly where you're at, what you need. Some people need to be on, you know, uh, 10, you know, different products, especially I mean, from a cardiology standpoint. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I mean, do I think everybody needs a multivitamin? I do. Do I think everybody needs, you know, probiotics. And obviously, I mean, there, there's basically until you've rebuilt your, I don't take any everywhere. probiotics, but I've also rebuilt, like I'm at a different health level, right? I've spent time rebuilding my gut health and everything else. I have no issues, but yeah. not everybody's at that point, right? Like to your point, yeah, the average person probably does need some probiotics because they're all jacked up. Well, I mean, if you're not eating tons of fermented vegetables, you got to be taking probiotics and, you know, listen, you know from, the from, yeah, from, from the water, uh, from, you know, the food people eat. I mean, there's antibiotics in everything these days. So unless you're getting the best water and the best meats, uh, you know, uh, fluoride, chlorine, hand sanitizers, uh, you know, or, 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 or just in the fact that all of our food used to be loaded with with bacteria, uh, you know, so when you pulled a head of, you know, spinach from the ground or a head of cabbage, I mean, it was covered with dirt yep. and you ate that dirt. So even the best of us aren't. And nowadays that. you can't so, even eat, even, let's say you tried to do that again, you're growing your own garden. That dirt is not the dirt from 25 years ago. Yeah. Let's be real. Yep. So it goes the, back um, to nutrient density. In our, in our gardens, uh, you know, we do, we bring in organic soil, uh, organic certified soil. So we know the quality of the source, but, he, but that's not, that, that's just to say that it is edible dirt. Sure. Uh, it, it isn't to say, well, it's not, you know, deficient, you know, in, you know, broccoli came from China. It didn't, you know, come from Northern California. Uh, so. Oh, I learned something yeah. every day. I didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you for the history lesson. I didn't even know that, man. I, I eat broccoli like crazy. So now, um, All fruits and vegetables in the world didn't come from California, despite what most people believe. <laughs> it so become, it, from now, it comes from there now. Yeah. Before, before we resort back to closing on the important point here on, again, we, we've he, we focused heavily on MCT and coconut oil and everything else, but real quick on your testing, because admittedly, I, I personally, again, to our listeners, guys, listen in because 
uh, I'm going to be selfish here. Um, I've done a bunch of different tests and actually I want to try out your system, like what you have on your website, for example. So, um, is it just a one flat, like, Hey, you just do that testing kit. It's the same thing you give everybody. It's one. It doesn't vial. matter if I'm the health nut or not. Right. I, I yeah. don't know. I'm not, I'm not well, familiar with your system cause I'm going to try it here in the next month, but I'm, I just did one. So I'm waiting. Well, well, the only thing that I have up on my website right now is the wheat zoomer and that's an analysis looking for intestinal hyperpermeability and gluten sensitivity, gluten gliadin, you know, so all the different antibodies, uh, associated with that, uh, you know, so hi intestinal hyperpermeability is, is zonulin, anti-zonulin, anti-actin, anti-LPS, yep. IgG, IgA, uh, and then all the different components of gluten gliadin. So, you know, listen, there's a lot of mixed messages people are getting, you know, out there, uh, you know, and about what the best diet is. Listen, you know, get yourself tested and see where you're at. Don't take my word for it or Scott's word for it, uh, or or some, you know, you know Caldwell Esselson or you know some of the you know vegan. Uh, gurus, get yourself tested and see see what your numbers are, and then make an educated decision. I would agree with that. So now, and again, real quick, I'm actually going to share that again. So again, to some of our listeners, and I shared this on the last episode. Yeah, wow, okay, that's three ninety nine. I'm like, oh, that's four hundred bucks. I'm like, okay, well then, I'll take it the next month or two and set aside like twenty bucks a week or something, and bang out at least a good chunk of that nut and set it aside because like you talk about your health, you talk about yeah. your gut. You talk about your body from the inside out. You heal your body from the inside out. And at least this is going to potentially give you some direction. And granted, I'm being honest to our listeners. I haven't used this one yet, but I've done other blood panel testing and other things because I've been leveling up. You got to start somewhere. But I guarantee you in the next month, I will be doing this test. Okay? So our listeners, guys. People waste. You know, so much money and so much stuff, Scott. I mean, listen, yeah. I'm not anybody's accountant. I'm not even my own accountant. Um, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, uh, just take a look at where you're spending, the, you know, your money and your alcohol addiction, your sugar addiction, your gambling addiction, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the, the house, the car, the paint, the flooring, uh, the new clothes, whatever it is. I mean, you know, you want to take, invest in yourself, invest in your health. It's a good investment. I don't care if you get it from me or not, frankly. No. Well, again, um, for me though, I have zero, literally I have zero grain yeah. in my, in my lifestyle. So yeah. like, I don't have any wheat, nothing. I, I, I went off a beer a year and a half ago. Like my mountain biking buddies I was riding with today, they're like, you don't, you don't, you don't drink beer. Mm -hmm. Like, no, when I lived in Colorado, I did, but I've been, I've been, I've been hacking my body, man. Like, like, you know what? I made a sacrifice a year and a half ago. And I said, right. you know what? I'm going to see what level of performance I can get out of cutting that out of my life for a year. It's a year and a half of my life. What the hell? You know, and I've seen say some that positive changes. And, yeah. And people are like, oh, you know, don't you miss this? And, you know, you miss, you know, the alcohol or, and it's not that I don't, you know, drink organic tequila, yeah. you know, I, you know on occasion or organic red wine or, or whatever, uh, you know, gluten-free omission beer, you know, maybe once every, you know, every, uh, you know, six months. Um, but I did all that, mm -hmm. you know, I did all that for the first 35 years. I drank every drink. I ate every food. You know, I, I went to Mardi Gras. I went to Oktoberfest in, in Munich, Germany. I've been to the Kentucky Derby. I've been to the Indy 500. I've been everywhere. Um, and heavy you know, drinking events, by the way, <laughs> heavy drinking events. I've done it. I've done it. So I'm not missing anything going forward. And as I've told many, many, many times, my father died at the age of 63 and that's not going to be me. It's, it's too young. Not, not going to be me. It's so, and he lived that lifestyle. And like I said, I got two young kids. Um, I got another one on the way. So, Hey, that's it. So to our listeners, because again, the whole point of you and I taking the time again, guys, this is on a Sunday. Okay. It is currently 10 PM my time. He's a few hours behind me. Obviously he's in Arizona. So like, this is our commitment to you. All right. To our listeners, like people don't understand what the hell podcasting is all about. Like, this is why some of us are doing this. We're taking a stand to try and get you free content, to try and just educate you a little bit better in your life. I take this personally. I take personal accountability on this. And I really, really love and respect the fact, Jack, that you've also taken the time away from your family to give this to our listeners. And I appreciate this and I respect this. So thank you. I, I personally, I mean, if our listeners don't, I want to thank you personally. Um, how would you want to close up the show? Again, normally, again, on our show, 
the guest co-host gets the closing words anyway. And I know we the whole point of coming on today was to address this freaking AHA miseducation, yep. coconut oil, saturated fats. How, how do you want to close out our, our listeners in education? You, you know, uh, I mean, it's all I can say is, I mean, there's tons of information out there, tons of mixed messages, frankly, from all different places. Uh, let's just trust in Mother Nature and understand that humans have been eating saturated fats for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, embrace it. It is saturated fat is not the problem. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be arguing about this and there wouldn't be such controversy if it was definitively the issue. The problem is not that beautiful uh, co organic coconut oil. The problem is the sugar. The problem is the processed foods. Uh, the problem is the environment. The problem is the lack of sleep, the lack of sunshine, the lack of being grounded, the lack of high quality water. That's what the problem is. The problem is not the coconut. Yeah, that's a blame game right there. Well, thank that's you, guys. That's all I can say, Scott. Well, again, Jack, I want to give you a proper goodbye, so please just hang tight for a second. Again, to our listeners, guys, that's Dr. Jack Wolfson, okay? He's taken this so seriously. He's changed his career. His wife has been a powerful influence. Again, follow them, the Doctors Wolfson. They're everywhere, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Just go to the doctorswolfson.com. You can follow him everywhere from there. Uh, again, he's been on past episode 70. He's been on here again this episode. I don't know what number it's going to be yet, but again, this is what we're talking about, guys. Whether it's coconut oil or your water or just life in general, focus on rebuilding yourself from the inside out. Take some lessons. Go read his free blog content. Don't trust AHA on uh, their blatant in publication. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and take a position on that. So to our listeners, guys, thank you for listening in. Thank you for following Dr. Jack Wolfson. Thank you for following Live the Fuel. But again, this is what we're all about, guys. Keep living the fire to epic life. We'll talk to you guys again soon. And you're clear of the podcast. So good this stuff. Is just video content. So I hope I didn't go over the top. I have never been, I've never been this really this passionate on a podcast yet, but you know what? I want to tell you this, this like literally earlier this week when this came out and Aaron and I recorded, I told her the same thing. I'm like, you know what? This for the first time in almost a year when I launched a show, I'm like, I, this is why I launched this damn show. Yeah. I, I just, it, at least I, if I get through to one person with some po quality education, we're doing something right. And that's how I'm looking at this. Yep. Yep. No, I mean, and, can you, and, and I know you're obviously, you're very disappointed in the American Heart Association. And so frustrating. Just, just knowing, uh, you know, how many people take the lead, you know, from an organization like that. They don't come down strong on sugar. They're not coming down on trans fats. You know, they're coming down on the free range grass fed farmer, you know, and who's a struggling farmer, ground beef. I mean, you know, in favor of the hydrogenated soybean oil industry. I mean, you know, and uh, it's just it's just craziness. But we'll continue to get the truth out there. I mean, breast milk is all saturated fat. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, oh, and, well, the, it's and good also for the gift baby. of life. I mean, oh my god. Yeah. It's it's just crazy. crazy and and there's doctors actually recommending that mothers, if they can breastfeed so yeah. it's like okay if it's good for the baby why is yeah. it not good for us you know but listen i mean myself as a cardiologist what if they um you know uh you know, you know state licensing boards and stuff like that to come after a guy like me and like why do you keep talking about saturated fat you know the the official stance is against it you know yeah. it's just uh it's you know, high this, risk for you and i yeah, tell people like is. again th this is, is still being recorded for our video so for yeah. our video watchers guys like Dude, he's, he's taking a very risky position with, I mean, the whole thing that was going on over in Africa with, um, I'm sorry, Dr. Oh, I'm blanking on his name right now, but uh, I'm just, it's been such a passionate weekend. Uh, famous doctor, he took the position, he was actually, he was tweeting uh, somebody and they, they had asked about, oh, she was a nursing mother and talking about becoming more, uh, he, she'd asked him a question about um, basically becoming more, you know, healthy fat diet. And she was worried about, is that going to affect her baby? It was just like an innocent tweet. And then like the yeah. government in Alaska and like the people who are all heavy grain, heavy sugar industry went up against them. It was a whole thing. And I was like, guys, like, dude, relax. doctors better stand strong. They better yeah. stand strong. And he they won don't. the case. But yeah. the point is, it's like, if that would have been over here, oh my God, who knows how it could have ended up. And unfortunately, you guys are trying to just do the right thing. And then you have a, you're up against some big, 
big guns. So yeah, no doubt. I mean, I was, uh, I was, I spoke in Toronto, um, a couple of months ago, I think it was right after you and I recorded. And uh, it was a couple of months ago, I was up in Toronto and, and I was talking with a cardiologist who was from Montreal. And she was telling me she loves my book. She loves everything that I say. She's a cardiologist in total agreement with me, but don't dare tell anyone because the government in the province of Quebec will take her license if she mentions vitamins, if she mm -hmm. says anything about vaccines, you know, and that's the scary anything part. controversial, they will pull her license without even a thought. And that's the problem. Like if doctors true, I mean, again, I, I tell the last couple episodes, I told my listeners, my guys, this is a free content podcast. You are still responsible to just follow professional guidance. This yeah. is just free education. You still have the social responsibility to make your own decision on what you feel is best for your life. Follow your professional advice. But in the end, it's like, it's scary. The fact that doctors are trying to find like yourself are trying to find the healthier step and the healthier uh, uh, influence, but you have to watch your back because if they censor guys like me. We're done. Yeah, we are done. It's scary. We are done. So, uh, you know, hopefully there will always be voices, you know, like yours out there. But, uh, you know, if you don't have some medical people, and I'm not the only person out there. I mean, obviously, no. there's tons of, you know, listen, you know, Bob Atkins was a fat guy. And you got so many people that are on, uh, you know, ketogenic, uh, which is similar to paleo and the Walls Very. protocol and the specific carbohydrate diet and the GAPS diet on and on and on. Uh, you know, people that are following that and they've, and I've got such success in my practice and so many patients that are doing so, ama so amazingly well, I can't imagine if they made them all low fat vegans going forward. I mean, it's just, it's just craziness. It's absolute craziness. So again, I, I, again, personally, again, to our people watch this YouTube video, like, again, like, thank you for your commitment. And I, I'm a, definitely a wholehearted supporter on the fact that you guys are taking the risks you do. And thank you for actually trying to help people with legitimate health care and not, you, friend. not pharmaceutical <clears throat> care. <laughs> uh, if you got a check in a uh, second, you know, make sure you check out my, uh, my new post on, uh, on reflux. And if you have a chance, I'll be interested in your feedback. I and I do have a friend minutes. actually struggling with acid reflux. So yeah. I'm actually going to look at for him because he does trust me as a health nut. So we, I try and help where I can. Yeah. So. I definitely want to check that out. All right, Scott. It's uh, past your bedtime, buddy. Yeah, thank you, sir. It's worth it for the customers, <laughs> for the listeners. So, <laughs> But thank you All again right. for this commitment. And again, uh, I've never met your wife yet virtually or anything. But again, I, I just, I've never met her. But from everything you've told me, like, thank her for me on just, you, you guys are a power couple in my mind. So thank you so much. Well, whenever you're ready to do a, an episode on raising, uh, you know, the holistic uh, uh, children and the holistic pregnancy, she'll be a great resource for you. And uh, I'm game, yeah. man. Again, we talk yeah. about health, business, and lifestyle. It's it's health. It's lifestyle. We're in. So I'm all about that. And I'm not a. I've actually have never done anything really heavily influencing the youth yet. So yeah, let's do that. So yep. yeah, you let her know, and I'm game. So sounds good. Thanks, Scott. You guys have a great night. All right, you too, buddy. Take it easy. Bye-bye.